everybody and welcome to well is it a packs at home video is it a let's look at we're just gonna call it let's look at scale because we are a little bit removed from the packs prime 2013 experience here but this is a game that i uh, solicited from its developer a guy by the name of steve swink although he's working with a team of collaborators of course as well you know uh, it takes a, a village to raise a child in this case it takes it takes an army to raise a game in any case uh I am babbling incoherently already, we've barely gotten started, but Steve was very busy, of course, getting ready for the convention. I did see a huge lineup to play scale at PAX, so, you know, he kind of needled me, I needled him, and here I am playing uh, an early prototype of scale that is still very, very early de in development, uh, but is also exceptionally intriguing. What is scale? You're gonna find out pretty quickly. It's almost like... Super Mario 64 meets Portal, and that is a very superficial and aesthetics-based way to describe it. Coffee maker, I'm trying to hold a conversation with myself here. Um, but you'll see what's going on in a second as soon as we get started. It is a first-person puzzler. It is not really a puzzle platformer, but it kind of is in a way. Um, but it's unlike any I've played before, you know, you can describe games like Gateways as being like a 2D portal, or you can describe games like Cube as being like, oh, it's portal, but with like a different mechanic, or Mag Runner Dark Pulse is like, it's like portal with magnets. If we're going to use that as a, kind of our starting point, then Scale, as you'll soon find out, is essentially portal with a gun that causes objects to get bigger and smaller, and we have control over that, and we're going to use that to solve puzzles. So first thing first, I'm going through the very, very early stages of the game right now, as I do with any kind of, uh, Puzzler. I, I like to play sections that I've already played before just so I don't get hung up for too too long uh, But we're gonna introduce some very basic mechanics here, too So this serves as a very convenient kind of intro point one thing that we're gonna have to learn a lot about is these uh, Scales that we come across here so we can see oh man. I should really hit the gym. I weigh 60 somethings uh, But we have to get up to 101 so we're gonna put one of these uh, Tardises on here, and that's gonna be 36 and then another 36 and then one more um, I'm not sure if that math is perfectly right, but it does take us to over 101, and this is going to allow us to finally get our scale gun. I say finally because Jesus Christ, it's been 45 seconds already, get to the point, right? Uh, the way that the scale gun works, very simple. Right click, make something smaller. Left click, make something bigger, and even though this might seem like, oh, it's just like Portal with another gimmick, this allows for some really, really novel and cool puzzle designs, as you will see. Starting from the most simple part here, we can look at this and be like, hey, wait, this is too big for me to pick up, so we want to obviously scale this down, and then we'll bring this over here to this scale, and we'll put it on, and it'll probably be, yeah, not nearly heavy enough. This is a very simple example of a puzzle that you might come across in scale. I promise you that by the end of this video, we will be showing you stuff that it might not blow your mind necessarily, because I'm not capable of doing the puzzles that will blow your mind, but it'll at least get you thinking and get you interested, is my guess. So I'm going to shoot this with my scale gun and make it grow exceptionally large. Oh, it's going to fall off the scale. I should probably get in here. So you know scale? It's got a nice little pun. It's, you're scaling objects. They're getting bigger and smaller. But also, you come across all these, like, weight scales uh, over the course of the game. How about this one? You've played Brothers. You know small things can slip through uh, iron bars here. So we can pick this up and uh, push it through here, put it on top of the scale, and then shoot our scale gun through the bar. And you can see that we can interact with things, even if we're not in direct... Uh, kind of physical contact with them. Anyway, this is very much the opening tutorial level of uh, scale, but we're gonna do some cool stuff, and you're, you're gonna see the Super Mario 64 comparison pretty quickly, I think, so I'm just gonna make this flower grow a little bit larger. This is where the platforming elements come into play, obviously. Uh, the Super Mario 64 comparison I made, which I am totally such a poser, I'm probably one of the worst Super Mario 64 players in the world, uh, is that we do uh, do a little bit of platforming, and we do it to uh, get some collectibles. That I need to get this particle up here, for example. By the way, I should point out, uh, I'm not sure how finished like the art design in the game is. I'm not sure if this is placeholder art or if this is finished work. So I'm not going to comment on that necessarily. Um, but suffice it to say, I think the game looks colorful and distinctive as it is right now. Uh, but yeah, we've got to get these particles. So I, I fucked up that first little kind of initial platforming. But I should be able to just get on this flower and uh, make it grow larger, and then I can just jump over to it. So every level has a, or every world, has a certain level, a uh, certain number of uh, particles that we can get, and by getting all of them, we can complete the world. It works the same way as like an N64-style platformer, where if we get a certain number of particles, that opens a gate that gives us access to another world with a, its own suite of puzzles on it, shall we say. So we got the first particle. Uh, what I really like about the game is that it does give you kind of direction, so we can see the sandbox. This is our title. Memory number two across the spikes. Oh, sorry, the sandbox is the name of the world. Uh, memory number two across the spikes. So we are going to try to uh, figure out what that means and divine where to get this particle. Now, of course, you know, we're very early on in the game, uh, so it should be pretty simple for us. Where are the spikes? The spikes are here. 
we got to figure out just how the heck to get across these. By the way, most of the objects in the game, even if they're not necessarily relevant to the puzzles, are uh, completely scalable. The exceptions are like if there's a physical block, like, how can I explain this? What if I try to scale this thing up? It, it is choosing not to. Um, like, if two objects, like, rub up against one another and it, causing one to expand would cause it to bump into another one, it won't expand. Uh, similarly, you also have scale juice, uh, as you can see on the right side of our gun there, which, um, I guess this can't grow any taller either. Uh, you have scale juice, which basically means, you know, you use scale juice to make things grow larger and you get scale juice back for making things grow smaller. I'm not sure if meter management will ever play a role in the game, uh, but as of present, that's how it works. So... Across the spikes, we can see that there's like kind of like a particle glowing over there. So we're just going to expand this, and that will kind of springboard us over here. I thought I would be able to land on top of that, but uh, instead we can probably just kind of expand this just a little bit. And Oh, that's too far. <laughs> that's definitely too far. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, so I'm going to climb up these steps, and I should be able to get it. So these are very simple examples, but I promise you that by the end of this very early tutorial world, you'll see a puzzle that will uh, kind of demonstrate the kind of very, very cool things that can be done in a game like this. Keep in mind, this is not meant to be like a super critical let's look at, by the way. I, not that I think the game is bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I feel like I should point that out, that this is not like a, uh, an editorial or critical look at the game. It's not even available for sale yet. Uh, it's not even available for pre-order yet. Man, I am the worst platformer in the world. Um, but uh, I will will give you links that you can use to follow the development of the game as well as its creator. Not the development of its creator, unless you know. That is personal choice from him, I guess. So we got that, and we'll continue moving on here. But yeah, this is just kind of like, like the storyteller let's look at I did a long time ago. And all it also is in the same family as those like packs at home things. It's basically being like, hey, this is a cool game coming out. You may or may not be familiar with it. Whether you are or not, check this out. Here's some footage of a, of a game that I think could really make some waves. I totally did not see what the name of this memory was. Um... Where should I... Maybe I should just uh, reset the level instead, and then it'll tell me. Launching to the cloud. Okay, so it's important to look at the names of those memories if you're as daft as I am. Uh, because this will allow you... Yeah, there we go. There's a particle right up there. So we're going to, again, Super Mario 64 cannon style us up there uh, to hopefully get that particle. And that's going to be easy. These are some very easy, like, one-step puzzles, essentially, in the very like primitive aspects or primitive puzzles that we come across in the very earliest parts of the game but even when we get into the second world and I will play a little bit of the second world after the sandbox um, you're gonna see some cool stuff that uh, requires some kind of like multi-tiered thinking if that makes sense so this is the coolest puzzle that I encountered in the sandbox I really like this one a lot and I'm proud to admit figured this one out for myself I didn't even like I, I was on memory 2 or something the one where you're supposed to go over there and I was like wait a minute I should go over here. There's a treasure chest over here. I've got an idea that I think just might be crazy enough to work, and it turns out that it totally did. So we come over here, and we're like, what the heck? Where's the particle? Well, the particle, you can't really see, but it's inside of this treasure chest. So what we can do with this, many of you at home are probably already uh, divining this, but we can make it small enough to pick up, and then it's teaching us, okay, you can rotate it. So let's rotate it like so, and then we'll put it down on the ground, and then we'll kind of stand on top of it, and we'll expand it, and by doing this and making sure we stay on it, uh, eventually we can make the keyhole large enough that we can actually fit through it, and there's our particle right there. So that was one of the puzzles that I was kind of most titillated by when I played through it myself. Uh, and I don't know what this last particle is. I'm not sure if I ever got the fifth particle on the sandbox when I played before. Memory 4, in the treasure chest. I already did that one. <laughs> or did I get them out of order again? That looks like the fifth one, so maybe I made a, a terrible mistake. Uh, sure, I don't see another particle. That, that is just like a particle shell to indicate that I've already gotten it. So why don't we go, um, we'll go to the hub world. I'm, I'm assuming that these menus are all work in progress, by the way, of course. Keep in mind, you know, games constantly, consistently, or currently under development. So anything you see is subject to change. Maybe it'll be terrible when it comes out, but for right now, it is a lot of fun, even as just kind of like a glorified prototype. So we're on uh, the Old Victorian, that's the name of our world. It refers to basically the defining, I guess, thematic element of the level we're about to be in. And that is an Old Victorian house. So this uh, mission is called a Houseception. So first things first, we see this house right here. And this is really where uh, I started to realize what kind of devilish potential scale might have. Because, you know, we can bump up the size of this house. Let's make it big enough that a normal human can walk inside of it. We'll get inside and look around. You see, like, most of these rooms 
pretty barren, which I think actually makes sense. It might look like, oh, we're going to put like a dresser here at some point, blah, blah, blah. Maybe, but I appreciate that these rooms are empty right now because for someone with a IQ the size of mine, it uh, shows me like, oh, there's nothing to do in this room. Don't waste your time looking around, trying to make an alarm clock big enough to wake up some kind of ethereal giant or something like that. But then we come through here and we're like, okay, there's another house here. Maybe we want to blow this one up and get inside of it. Uh, but we can't because it's stuck to the dresser. So maybe we'll shrink it down to a smaller size, put it down on the ground. Maybe we want to move the dresser after this, but actually this is just causing the, the entire house to move. So um, instead, we are just going to take this house outside and we will put it down in a region where I can expand it without it knocking over any trees or anything like that. Uh, and I believe that there's just a particle directly inside of this. So that's pretty cool. We started with a very, like, small dollhouse-sized uh, Victorian establishment. And now we have turned it into two normal-sized houses. Um, but we do have to get uh, a certain amount of weight on this uh, scale here. So I guess I have to put something on it. Uh, basically, at least so far, everything you can see that's not just, like, the ground is something that you can interact with. So any kind of object that juts out from it, even the clouds, you can make, uh, larger and smaller, as you can see. Right now, I could just, if for some reason I needed more scale juice, I guess I could just suck some of that from them. Um, but we can, like, shrink this flower, pick up this flower, and bring it in here. Ten weight is, like, really, really small, so I don't even think we'll have to do any scaling in order to get it to grow larger. Let's come in through here, and we'll drop this on, and this should unlock a particle for us. It did indeed, so we'll pick that up, uh, and that is good. Uh, if I get inside of it, I don't think you can just press E to interact. By the way, I should mention, I wanted to mention this right off the top. Uh, let me just make a quick mental note of what the memory name is here, so I remember what to do. Butterfly Ride, this is a cool one. Uh, music in the game, at least so far, there's tracks provided by Ben Prunty. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I say again because he also did uh, some of the music in Gravity Ghost. So uh, it seems like he is a busy man these days. Also, tracks provided by Danny B, of course, of Binding of Isaac, Super Meat Boy fame. Uh, ben Prunty also did the soundtrack to FTL, in case you were wondering where you've heard that name before if you did not see the Gravity Ghost video. So definitely a, a killer soundtrack here. This uh, one is called Butterfly Ride. So what I'm trying to do here is just mouse over the butterfly. It will make the butterfly larger, which is creeping me out just a little bit. Uh, and if I get on top of this butterfly, then he should take me... There we go. Oh, now butterfly, where are you going? He, he waits here for me, I guess, which is smart design. Um, yeah, so I, I wait for the butterfly, then I make him larger. And eventually, there we go. He's going to take off, and he'll carry me over here to particle land. Particle land, holding the things that a particle can. So we'll just wait here. Try not to fall. Obviously, you can, like, die, reach a fail state uh, in the game. Uh, but it's really cool that you can interact with stuff like this. And, you know, I really like how when you finish a level in this game, it's not like you left it like you found it. Like, when you finish a level in this game, it is, like, beaten up. There are giant insects and, and fauna and it's flora, I guess, because I was trying to talk about the flowers. I always get the two mixed up. Um, but it looks totally different than when you started. I don't know if there's multiple ways uh, to solve each individual puzzle. Beats me. Um, I'm gonna go to do one last puzzle here, so I'm gonna go into the hub. Maybe two last puzzles, actually, uh, because honestly, I couldn't figure out how to beat the painting secret. So I'm gonna go to this world over here, uh, and I'm not sure how much of the game exists, like if I can go through that giant door, it says you need six particles. I have six particles, uh, but I'm just gonna stick to puzzles that I'm familiar with for now, just because that's what I'm most comfortable with. So we have puzzle one, the Geodome. We actually are gonna do two more puzzles here to uh, sort out this video. So Geodome. I guess uh, the Geodome is the industry term, if you were going to go to a trade show that sells children's playground equipment, uh, for these things that you hang on and build your upper arm strength with. Now, um, I need to make it larger so I can fit through and get that uh, particle, but obviously I can't because it's blocked by this tree. So I gotta like make this tree smaller, but now the tree's getting blocked by the Geodome, so you know, we got a little bit of a... Mutual disagreement here. We're just gonna pick up this tree and then like put it over here where it's not as much of a nuisance And then we should just be able to fit through here and get this particle Okay, let's get on to this last puzzle This demonstrates kind of like what I really like about this game I like a lot of things about this game, but one of the things I really like about this game uh, in its current state uh, Inside the fort was not the one I wanted I think but we can probably get this one too uh, Is the way that you interact with uh, Objects that are not necessarily physically next to you. I mentioned this a, a little bit earlier uh, we will do two more puzzles, actually, because this one demonstrates exactly the same principle, albeit in a more obvious way, sort of. Um, 
Yeah, I really like how you have to interact with objects that are not totally next to you, like objects that you're not necessarily holding at all times. So first things first, we're going to take this uh, weird little playground garbage can, I guess this is, or bathroom stall, I don't know. And we're going to scale it up until it's big enough to uh, fulfill this scale's requirements. Um, where, where did I go here? I've lost myself. There we go. Uh, and then we're going to shrink it down, and we're going to have to grab it through the bars. Hopefully it's close enough for me to grab Yeah, there we go. Just grab it through that hole, actually, and shrink it down a little bit more so it can fit through easily. Uh, and then pick it up and slide it through here. I mean, we basically saw this puzzle on the uh, tutorial room, so this one's not necessarily as novel. But it does demonstrate that concept. I think that's where I initially introduced uh, that idea that I like. Uh, but this next puzzle, in particular, is one where your actions have... Uh, effects on distant objects and you need to have those effects in order to solve the puzzle. I think it's super cool. So first things first, uh, we got this bridge here. So initially when I played it, you know, I expanded the bridge. That part's pretty easy. But then you realize like, whoa, the gaps between uh, the slats in the bridge are actually enormous because, you know, you've really expanded this thing that was not built for this. So instead what you can do is just stand on this and rather than trying to platform across all these, why not just shrink the bridge and then it'll take you directly to the exit. So you got to think a little bit differently. Now, uh, there's a scale over here. That's got to hit 500. That's pretty big. You can see that right here. I didn't mean to spoil it for you without showing you why. Um, we have uh, a couple of arches over here. So I'm just going to uh, expand this arch a little bit just to save me some time uh, a little bit later. That's as big as it'll get. And we got to figure out how do we get uh, something onto this scale. Well, the memory's called Rolling Orange. Maybe we take this orange over here and we just expand that up or upscale it as much as we can and then this will start rolling and it's gonna go across this bridge it's gonna go through this arch but unfortunately this next arch not quite big enough so we'll expand that as high as it'll go and then this orange should be able to roll onto the scale thereby allowing me to get the particle beautiful so th that's gonna do it for my uh, you know kind of let's look at of this version of scale it's very much a work in progress but it's got a lot of really interesting ideas so far I think this pretty much justifies why there was always a, a huge kind of kink in traffic uh, whenever I tried to get around this booth at PAX and it, it looks totally cool uh, dig in the soundtrack dig in the concepts of the game normally it takes a lot for a first person uh, platform sorry first person puzzler to kind of uh, win me over but this one is definitely well on its way again um, I'm not sure if there's a green light campaign if there is one I will put it in the video description below encourage you to support Support that. Otherwise, steveswink.com to get more information in the, on the game, and I will link to the developer's Twitter uh, in the video description as well, so you can check out the game as it gets a little bit further on in development. I'm sure I'll be checking it out as it gets, uh, again, a little bit further on in development, but for now, uh, big thanks to Steve for letting me take a look at his game. Scale looks awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.